نستعينه ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه عباد الله اوصيكم ونفس المقصره اولا بتقوى الله فاتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ثم اما بعد All praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. The best of his peace and blessing shall be bestowed upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon those that follow his footsteps. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd, Allahu Akbar kabira, wa alhamdulillahi kathira, wa subhanallahi bukrata wa asila. The brothers and sisters, the Hajj, the pilgrimage, the trip to Mecca is one of the greatest rituals and worships that we have in Islam. And this particular worship is greatly tied to a story of a great man and a great family. A family that we can learn a lot from. A family that went through a struggle that exist in every time and every age at different scales. This is the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam wa ala rasulina afdalu salatu wa atamim al-taslim. The story of Prophet Ibrahim is a truly inspiring story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanidatan lillahi hanifa wa lam yakum min al-mushrikeen. Ibrahim alayhi salam kana umma. And the word umma, as explained by ulama, it means, <clears throat> has several meanings. That explains his behavior that got him to that high status of success and high status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim kana umma. The word umma means alladhi wa'allim al nas al khayr. The person that teaches people and helps people out and teaches people the good. An ummah also means ummatan wahdahu. He by himself was in the value of a whole nation. One man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him ummah. His status is big, his achievements are huge. So he is worth a whole nation. Ummah also. As the ulama explained, أَنَّهُ مُؤْمِنًا وَحْدًا At a certain period of his life, as a prophet calling people for the good, he was the only believer, him and his wife. Imagine, by himself. Ummah also means Imam Huda, a person that is followed and a person that will bring guidance to people. All of this is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Qanitan muti'a lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was obedient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised Ibrahim alayhi salam with two things. Being diligent, being guidance, source of guidance for human beings. And being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ibrahim alayhi salam his status. What happened to Ibrahim? Quickly. We all know that Sayyidina Ibrahim went through many, many tests of his faith. When he grew up as a young man, when he started as a young man rejecting, rejecting the behavior of his people when they worshipped idols, it didn't make sense to him. He had a clean heart and a clear mind. He started his search for the truth and his search for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He went through one challenge after the other, but he never stopped. They all gathered against him, even his own father went against him, but he never stopped. He was thrown in the fire. They wanted to burn him, and that didn't stop him. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala each and every time would support him. Ya nabukuni babdan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the fire as we all know to be peace and coolness for him. So he never got burned. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. He, was, he, he went through every test that we can think of in pursuit of the truth, in pursuit of his faith, in protection of his faith, and he never gave up. And at the end, after all these stories of challenges and tests, Rasulullah is telling us in an authentic hadith, لَيْسَ فِيهَا مُؤْمِنٌ عَلَى لِسَانِ Ibrahim he told his wife, لَيْسَ فِيهَا مُؤْمِنٌ غَيْرِي وَغَيْرِكِ At the end, after years and years of challenges, he tells his wife, and by the way, after all this, it's only the two of us. We're the only believers. So imagine the diligence, imagine the hard work, without seeing any fruits. But he never gave up. He never sat back and said, you know what, enough, you know, nobody is responding to me. That's it, let me take care of myself. He never did this. At the end, he said, it's only me and you, and he was never given the gift of uh, having children to a very old age. And that's when he said, it's time for me. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the offspring. But let's see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the status by saying, وَمَا يَرْغَبُ عَنْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِهَا نَفْسَهِ وَلَقَدْ إِسْطَفَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Those who reject the faith and the way of life of Ibrahim, peace be upon him, their ignorance. Why their ignorance? Because his model of pursuing the truth and working so hard and sacrificing a lot if you don't follow this model, you're not going to reach your goal. Where did it take Ibrahim alayhi <laughs> Or what caused him to reach that status? <laughs> Submission. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to submit. So he submitted. This is our first S. We have an equation that we're going to give you today, inshaAllah. It's three S's, three words. And the word submit is very important here for us. So the first one was success. His success in dunya and akhirah started by submit, submission. Submission to what? In this story, submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we want to broaden the idea, it's submission to your cause. Your cause, you need to submit means, what does submit mean? It means full dedication, no hesitation. No ifs and buts, full submission to your cause. You want to reach success? Follow what Ibrahim did. His cause, alayhi salatu was salam, was to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to see the truth. So he fully submitted. Not only he stopped at himself, he didn't stop at himself another lesson. You need to transfer it over to your children. He advised his children to do the same thing. Because it's not you only, it's your offsprings. Where is Ibrahim السلام, reaching success first via submission? But it doesn't stop here. There's a lot more to it. A great story between Ibrahim and his son Ismail. After Sayyidina Ibrahim reached a point where it was only him and his wife, what did he do? He said, He said, that's it. I'm seeking your guidance, O oh Allah. I am seeking your guidance. I worked so hard, but no results. Rabbi Habli min as Allah, grant me righteous offsprings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him Ghulam Halim. Halim min al Hilm. Patience, wisdom. Hilm comes with patience and wisdom and ability to fathom and ability to understand. 
That was Ismail alayhi wa ala rasulina salatu wa salam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about Ismail. Wabdur fi al-kitabi Ismail. Innahu kana sadiq al-wa'di wa kana rasul al-nabiyya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised Ismail alayhi wa salam that he was truthful. He kept his promises and he was a prophet and a messenger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him Ismail. What happened to a man that just got granted a beautiful, patient, wise son? This son grew to become about 13 years old as narrated in some of the sources. After suffering so hard for many, many years, he's focused on his kids now, he's happy with his child. First order comes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to move his family to Mecca. So he obeys the order. And he moves from Palestine to Mecca. He moves his wife, Hajar, and his son, Ismail. It was very difficult for him, for sure. But again, Taslim, go back to submission. There's a wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we don't usually know. But we need to submit when we trust our cause and we follow our cause. We need to do what we have to do. So he moved his wife and his son. And after he settled them, it was a valley with absolutely no plantations or rocks. And those of you that went to Mecca or you can watch it on TV, no rock, no plantations. It's all rocks, subhanAllah, that valley. He placed them there and he, as he was leaving them, his wife asked him, where are you going? Where are you leaving us? He couldn't answer. Then she asked and listened to the submission. Not just Ibrahim the whole family. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order you to do this? Are you doing this because you were ordered to do so? Allahu amaraka bidalik? He said, yes. Then she said, Wallahi la Allah, subhanAllah. She said, Idan la yudayyu'na Allah, thumma raja. With absolute belief, she said, if this is part of the cause and this is part of the plan, although it looks terrible, a lot of things in life, they look terrible to us, but in reality, they're not. She said, if this is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go ahead, I know we'll be safe. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped them out, gave them the zamzam water, and people came, and then Mecca flourished and became a major city in Arabia. This is the submission, not just the husband, the wife, the whole family. And we end with this, the son. As we said, Ibrahim came back to, he, to see his son. And then what happened? Oh my son, I've seen in my dreams that I am slaughtering you. I'm sacrificing you. It sounds difficult. It sounds tough on a father that waited to have a son for years. It sounds really tough on a mother. Some people would say, is that even real? He saw in his dream that he is sacrificing his son. The, now the ultimate test of his faith and submission, the ultimate test of his dedication, you will be tested. And he's talking to his son, a son that just turned 13 years old according to some sources, a wise son, beautiful son, and then he says that he's, he's sacrificing him. What did the son say? The son realized that this is part of something bigger. The son submitted, didn't hesitate. The father consulted his son, he said, oh son, this is what I'm seeing in my dreams, what should I do? He said, oh father, do as you're commanded. Like, what a family. All united for the cause. And indeed, as he was just about to perform the sacrifice, we know the answer is that was not meant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't mean for him to sacrifice his son. It was an ultimate test of his faith and submission. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disabled, did not allow him to sacrifice his son. Instead, it was replaced with a sacrificial uh, goat or sheep. And this is why we sacrifice following the footsteps of Ibrahim alayhi salam 
and declaring our full submission to the cause, our full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. So you look at it now with this great story. Ibrahim reached a high status of success. How? Because he submitted fully to the cause without any hesitation. Not only him, him and his whole family, his team, working together as a unit. And how do you submit? What's the proof of your submission? Is sacrifice. You sacrifice your time. You sacrifice your money. You sacrifice your pleasure. You sacrifice your everything that you could sacrifice. If you don't sacrifice, it doesn't mean that you did not submit. And if you did not submit, you will never reach success. Remember the three S's. You need to sacrifice and you need to submit. And that's when you reach success in your life. This is my dear brothers and sisters. These are the stories of our prophets that we need to apply in our lives so we can reach the highest status of success in dunya and akhirah Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and protect us and shower us with his mercy we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift off this calamity from all human beings and take us back to the healthy and a safe life, inshallah, and peaceful life, and fair life that we're all seeking. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us His love, and grant us from His wisdom, and grant us the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and protect our deen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afwa wa al-afiyyata fi dunya wa al-akhira. Allahumma afina fi deenina. Allahumma afina fi dunyana. Allahumma astur awratina wa amin awratina. Wa ahfadna min bayni adayna wa min khalfina wa an yaminina wa an shamadilina wa min fawqina. Wa la'udu bi a'zamatika in nukhtana min tahtina. إنك على كل شيء قدير إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا الله سبحانه وتعالى bless you and give you a blessed Eid we will ask you if you don't mind please stay in for a few minutes we have special guests with us today they've been very close to our community and they're very dear friends of our community, especially throughout this, uh, this pandemic. They worked really hard with uh, uh, MPP, Brother Khaled Rashid, to work on reopening the places of worship. So we owe them thanks and we owe them uh, uh, respect for the hard work that they've been doing uh, with the Premier, Dr. Ford, on controlling the pandemic and making